Step one in painting Snow One Evergreens. First you want to just with a very light pencil line just draw an evergreen. Sometimes I find it easier if I just kind of draw in a trunk. And I like your know, evergreens come in many shapes and forms and stuff. Some of them you can kind of see through. There's a trunk in here. And others they're more like a cone shape. So whatever kind of evergreen you want to depict in your painting, draw that in. Just like you make sure you get it kind of irregular. And they're skinny at the top and fatter at the bottom. Okay, so here you can hopefully see that I drew five evergreens uh, across my paper just because I'm going to show you step by step how this goes. Not because this is going to be a painting with five evergreens. This is, if they were like that in a painting it would be a little boring because they're all more or less the same. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see how I drew them there. So next step is um, just painting in a little bit of background so that the trees will stand out. And then I'll show you how that looks. Alrighty, let me just show you what I use for my masking. I use drawing gum. It is called drawing gum. Uh, I like this particular one. I think it's called Papios, Papios, something like that. I'm not sure anymore. My I lost my my label on it. And there'll always be a little bit of gunk in these masking fluids after you've used them a few times. And then I use a little, I think it's a cup from Pepto-Bismol or something like that. Um, instead of dipping in my masking fluid, I like to pour out a little bit of that um, so that I don't contaminate everything in the bottle. And I'm going to put the lid back on. Make sure it's on really tight. And I always, when I have to carry it, I put it in a double plastic bag because it's leaked on me more than once. Um, I use a dedicated brush for masking fluid. Um, you don't want to use your good painting brushes for that because sooner or later the masking fluid is going to stick to your bristles and ruin the brush. So um, I try to keep mine in good shape by using soapy water. I carry a little bottle like this um, with soapy water. It's about half half water, and it just dis well, uh, dishwasher detergent or hand soap or one of those uh, will do. And um, I don't always use a brush. Sometimes I'll just use like this is um, birch stick or I use skewers from the kitchen and then I also have this little tool uh, I think it's called a drafting tool and it has this little it's like a beak and you can adjust how much or how little masking fluid or I also use it sometimes for fine lines dip it in um, watercolor painting paint that's diluted um, and you can adjust the beak by this little, this little uh, screw that you can screw on, so it has a bigger or smaller opening. And it, you know, is, it's easy to clean up because it's metal, so you can just wait for the masking fluid to dry and then just rub it right off. So that's another good tool for really precise lines. Anyway, there you have it, and here is my brush. And I'll show you how I do it. I dip my brush in the soapy water and make sure it's covered. And put the lid back on my soapy water so I don't knock it over. And then I can dip in the masking fluid and I'm ready to go like that. Okay? Okay, so. I have started putting the masking fluid on my first tree here and I'm using an old 
cheap brush to put my masking fluid on and I'm going to rinse it out again. I, I rinse out in between. I do these uh, masking these areas because I don't want the masking fluid to dry in my brush. Before I dip it back in the masking fluid, I dip it in soapy water first so I don't um, use my brush without having soapy water on. I took some of my masking fluid, uh, drawing gum it's called also. And mine here is, is gray. You can keep, get them in all sorts of different. You can get them clear and white and yellow and blue and depends on what brand you use. So I'm thinking about how snow lies on these evergreens. So it's definitely on top and it's weighing down the branches a little bit. It has soft edges and I'm going to put on snow on my five trees here just because I'm going to do them in stages and that way I have a little demo piece for when I teach classes and I'm going to write, make a little write-up which I'll post on my website so you can always go back and refer to how was that again you know so here it is and I'm tr again thinking snow and trying to make the edges kind of uneven and thinking about how it would lay on little branches and little twigs well you know the you'll see the next step we're going to paint in the twigs that are not covered by the snow so I'll just go over all these trees, all these trees that I just drew in and then I'll be back in a minute and show you the next step. So you can do your own trees in the meantime with the masking fluid and then we'll reconvene here. Okay, I'm sure that everything is completely completely dry and I am going to just uh, spray my palettes. I like to do that so that my colors are nice and moist. It's my favorite palette. Small enough for traveling and stuff like that. And there we have it. And just to show you, um, I am going to just paint in the background very lightly. Um, and now that I have covered up all my snow on the on the trees and the branches there, I can just go over my trees because everything that's not covered by the masking fluid is going to be darker than my background. I'm just going to you know run in a very very light kind of snow colored background, kind of a little bit of cobalt blue, and I keep it very very light. A little tiny put in a little bit of um, Opera Rose that's I like that combination for kind of snowy see it's kind of a bluish purpley color but it's very very light as you can see alrighty and sometimes I would probably do this wet into wet but since I just you know can go over and I have my color very very light I'm just going to go do it dry on wet, oh, wet on dry, sorry. Um, so that shouldn't be a problem. And I always make sure that I mush it around a lot, my, my pigments on my palette before I go anywhere with it, because I don't want to risk having any globs on my brush or in my paint. So here we go. Just going to go over it like this. And I'm going to just follow along. I make kind of like a ridge line here. And you have to remember this is just a demo piece just to show you how I go about doing the evergreen. So I'm not going to finish them all. I'm going to have them in each their own stage. And then I'm going to post it on my website under my tips and tricks. So then you can go back and refer to it and see it step by step. That was my whole idea with this little thing. All right, I think that's good enough. And just because I am the way I am, I had a little bit of pink on this other brush. And just for a little variety, I'm just gonna go in and do a little pink here and there. Even though it's not even gonna turn into a painting, I still like to play around with my colors a little bit. All righty, so here we have that. 
Now that has to dry, so we'll be back in a minute.